meeting of the Kalamazoo Historic <laughs> District Commission for Tuesday. That's not the right date. No, it's not. <laughs> Tuesday, the 16th of June. Tuesday, June 16th. My, my cheat sheet already failed me. Yeah, well, I, I want to apologize. That's the one thing I didn't change was the date at the top of the agenda. So, um, oops. Just real quick housekeeping. Uh, when you're when you're not speaking, if you could take measures to mute yourself just so we can avoid unnecessary echoes and things. Uh, for the first few items, we'll do uh, voice votes. And I will uh, I'll ask for a motion, I'll ask for support, and then I'll simply ask if there are any objections. And if there are no objections, uh, I will just uh, say the motion passes. And then for the actual agenda items, we'll do a roll call vote as normal. Sound good? Cool, good. So the first item, approval of absences. Sharon, I know we heard from BJ. Um, and John, we're still expecting. John, John was going to try to be here. Um, I, he may have some technical problems. Um, and uh, I haven't heard from, who else am I missing? Anyway, no, I, I hadn't heard that anybody told me they would not be here. Okay, so we're so. just technically approving BJ then. So we need a motion to approve uh, BJ's absence. I motion to approve BJ's absence. Seconded. <clears throat> You're on mute, Grant. I'm overcompensating. We have a motion from Commissioner Berg and uh, support from Commissioner Grayson. Uh, is there any objection? Hearing none, the absences are approved. Sharon, any changes to the agenda? Nope, no changes to the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? Anyone? I motion to approve the agenda. I second. Seconded. You can have this one, Dana. <laughs> we have a motion from Jeremy and a second from Dana. Any objections? Very good. Hearing none, the agenda is approved. Sharon, do we have any guests to introduce other than those who are representing a property? No, nope, these are all folks that are representing their properties. Okay, so no guests. Uh, would anyone present care to comment on non-agenda items? Neither looks nor sounds like it. So we'll move on. Sharon, uh, you wanna record the disclaimer for us? Yep. Chapter 16, section 23 of the city of, 22 of the city of Kalamazoo Code of Ordinance states, historical preservation is a public purpose. To serve that purpose, the Historic District Commission is hereby charged with the following responsibilities. The Kalamazoo Historic District Commission is empowered to regulate work on the exterior of historic resources and non-historic resources in historic districts in the city of Kalamazoo, and shall otherwise have all powers invested in Historic District Commissions pursuant to the Local Historic District Act, MCLA 399.201, 1970, PA 169 as amended 1992, to regulate work on resources which by city ordinance are historic or non-historic resources located within local historic districts, including but not limited to the moving of any structure into or out of or the building of any structure in an historic district. The following documents are available in the Community Planning and Economic Development Department lo located at 245 North Rose Street. These documents will help assist property owners in understanding the responsibilities of owning property in a local historic district. MCLA 399.201, 1970, PA 169 as amended, 1992, the Michigan Local Historic District Act, the Code of Ordinances of the City of Kalamazoo, Michigan, Chapter 16, Historic Districts, the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation and Guidelines for Rehabilitating Historic Buildings, 1990, Standards and Guidelines for Kalamazoo Historic Districts, and Maps of Kalamazoo's Local Historic Districts. These documents and maps are all, also available on the City of Kalamazoo website at kalamazoocity.org backslash local hyphen historic hyphen districts. There. Fantastic as always. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, moving on, we have no old business on the agenda. So straight into um, item A, which is 521 Elm and 523 Elm. I believe we have representatives with us for both of those properties and the project in general. Um, gang, I will turn it over to you to share the, the story with us, what you're hoping to accomplish here, 
I think we had we had a bit of a briefing on this previously, and then Sharon can chime in as necessary. Uh, and I'm sure we'll have some questions for you. So take it away. Hi. This is uh, Kirsten Smith um, speaking, and uh, we own 523. And Bob is with us. He owns 521. And as you can see from the, the pictures we drew, there's a very, very short distance between our houses. We actually remeasured it. We're actually under 10 feet between. It's closer to nine something. Um, and then we have a structure in the back, which we keep referring to it as a garage. But to be honest, it's not deep enough to park a car in unless it's a very small uh, vehicle. SUVs won't fit in it because they're too long. Um, and since there's no parking on Elm Street, we have a situation where we have to basically park back to back to back across and then let each other out of space in order to get in and out of the driveways. Um, there's room in the back that we could park behind our houses, which is what most of our neighbors have that situation. But with that structure there, we can't do that. Um, right now, Bob is actually parking on his front lawn. He was, and there's three, we have three um, bedroom houses, both each, each of us. So there's a potential for us to have more than the cars we currently have between the two households. But we currently, we alone at our house have three vehicles. And right now Bob has one, but he's hoping to get a roommate or have a wife or something at some point and have more vehicles. So we're trying to um, find a solution with that. And right now um, that, that building is not serving any purpose. The 521 sat vacant for... 10 years. 10 years and part of the problem with that was we owned this house but next door kept going up for tax auction and somebody would buy it from out of state or even locally they would say they were going to fix it up and rent it and then they would find out there was nowhere to park and so it would go back and they would stop work they wouldn't work on it they would let it go into tax foreclosure the next person would buy it that happened over and over and over again. And it sat vacant, people kept breaking into it. We kept having to call public safety because there'd be people in there. Um, the last person who bought it before Bob bought it and we talked to him and he had no idea that you couldn't park on the street when he bought it. So he started putting money into it, then found out that he wasn't gonna be able to rent it out and said, forget it, I'm gonna sell it because I can't rent it, No, there's nowhere to park. And when Bob bought it, we talked to him, he didn't know, he was from Grand Rapids. He thought he could at least park in front of his house, but he can't. And so we're just in the situation where we like our neighborhood, we wanna to continue to live in our neighborhood, but we're in the situation where this is not a livable situation for us. It, it affects our lives daily in both households. Um, if, if I can sort of add to that, uh, my name is Bob, I live in 521. And um, yeah, when I moved in, uh, I, I was unaware that you couldn't park on the streets uh, in Kalamazoo. Um, while I certainly don't blame the property for that, um, there are you know sort of easy remedies for this. Um, and it's true that in there are three occupants in in five two three Elm, and there hasn't been a problem because there had been nobody living in five two one Elm. But since I have moved in. If all three occupants are home from 523 Elm, there's nowhere for me to legally park because uh, I would either be parked in the street, which is illegal between, was it 2 a.m. and 6 a.m.? Mm -hmm. um, I would either be that or overhanging the sidewalk and partially out into the road, which is a city code violation. Um, Thankfully, um, I had been getting temporary parking permits while we were going to figure out this uh, garage situation. Uh, but when the coronavirus thing happened, they were no longer issuing those. So uh, I've been parking in my front yard, which is also a city code violation. But fortunately, none of my neighbors have you know, called the police or whatever. And I'm not even sure a policeman would is issue a ticket for that. But it is still against the city code violation. So... Um, I mean, this could either, this could either be solved by, uh, what we're hoping, which is getting, uh, or getting approval to have that garage demolished so we can park behind our houses independent of one another, because yeah. a major problem is we have to park sequentially 
in a straight line and only three vehicles can fit sequentially in that, um, in that driveway. And that's a particular issue for us because even just with the occupants of 523 Elm, um, you have a student at uh, Western Michigan University who has very different school hours and work hours than, than Scott here and certainly different than Kirsten. So we feel it's kind of, um, um, uh, what's the right word? Um, unnecessary to require two separate households with two very different work schedules and school schedules to try to coordinate parking every night and every day when we could just have a simple fix and have, have the garage taken down um, so we can park behind our home, own houses in, independently and use the driveway as a true driveway and not a parking lot. And we're perfectly willing to, um, if we're given permission to, we talked to somebody at, what was the it restoration was, it place? Was Roger from, Sharon, help me out. What's the name of the? Roger Parsnick Heritage Company. Thank you. Yeah, we talked to Roger, I talked to Roger and he said he was actually aware of the situation and I, I don't know how he's aware of that, but uh, he said, yeah, he'd be willing to come out and uh, take whatever is considered historically relevant and, and put it in his, in his shop where it could be reused somewhere else. Roger's running out of room. <laughs> Uh, great. Thank you all for that. Uh, Sharon, anything that you'd like to add? Um, the, uh, almost since I've been on this job, there's been a problem with the roof on this house. And I think that Kirsten and, uh, Scott bought the house in 2010, 2009, something like that. Yep. And it was in pretty rough shape then. I remember when I first met them having a discussion about whether they wanted to repair or demolish it and we went back and forth over the different you know pros and cons of that and no decision was made so it's a uh, it was clearly built to match uh 523 the back wall as you can see from the photos is fireproof block and that's because originally there was probably another garage close to it that they put the fireproof block in as a fire break between the two buildings Back in that day, people thought that, that cars would spontaneously combust because of the gasoline. So, um, so the fireproof block was a good choice, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's really not needed now. This is, it's got a lot of compromised uh, places where it's been repaired and repaired badly. There's a, a sistering job up here on the roof that was, has failed and is probably making it, actively making it worse. Um, you know, and it's got this flat chunk of, the roof, which you can see from the picture from above, there's a, a big chunk of the roof is just flat, which is a recipe for disaster in Michigan. So um, I don't I don't know. This is this is in pretty rough shape. This picture on the first page of photos, the picture on the top right, you can see the bow in the roof line, and that has only gotten worse as time has gone on. So uh, this is you know I think this is going to be up to the commission. Um, it's going to be a difficult demo, even if it does that's what is approved because it's such a tight space. And, and if I can add to that, Sharon, um, I, if you scroll up a little bit, there is the quote. That, now, I, I would like to oh. say that um, it was difficult to get quotes uh, for this because of the coronavirus situation. Um, I put out, it was four, four or five different requests for quotes and I only got a response from one who told me that they weren't even gonna send people out there. Um, but the one quote that we were able to get uh, was from an honest gentleman named Amos. Mm -hmm. And here you can see that he quoted demolition uh, without considering the dumpster at 2000. And then to put a new roof on the garage, he estimated somewhere between seven and eight. Because he was going to have to fix structure because the structure is so damaged. Yeah. It's very compromised. Yes, it is. So, and, and I, I don't want to say that that's, um, like an impossible figure to pay for if, if we have to repair it, but it just seems to be prohibitively expensive for something that doesn't even solve our particular problem. Um, Where we keep our lawnmower that's, and shovel, there's, we can't put cars in it. Yeah. It serves no, it's just, 
Yeah, that's. I hear you. Commissioners, do we have any? Does anyone have any questions for um, the the property owners or for Sharon? Nothing. Sharon, has this has this come up before? I'm just curious. No, it hasn't. Um, we uh, at the February meeting, which was our last meeting. I had just met with Scott and Kirsten and Bob, and I brought in some photos and just kind of showed you what I was seeing at that point. Um, it was not possible to see all the way around the structure because it was mid-February, so I wasn't able to see around the outside, and there was stuff all over the inside. And I have to say that the um, there's there's problems. This, is, this was a well-built garage, but it was neglected for many years long before Kirsten and, and uh Scott and Bob bought the houses. So it was already well on the way to being uh, deteriorated before they even bought their houses. So uh, we, we did see it before, but there was no decision made. There was no uh, proposal. It was just like a point of information. At the time when I brought it to the commission in February and showed some pictures, my goal was to see whether the commission would consider just my, me doing a, um, an administrative approval for demolition and the consensus of the commission was they wanted to actually bring it to the commission to make their decision rather than doing it that informally because it had not been an agenda item so they really wanted to be it you make sure everything was official yeah i just i wanted to say i, I think um kirsten what you said really resonated with me in terms of um the garage being a hindrance to the house being sort of maintained and you know i guess from my perspective if, if getting rid of the garage makes the property viable and that house can you know continue to live and sort of exist that you know that feels like a good trade-off to me but that's that's just sort of my personal opinion at this point so i'll leave it at that now one thing i do want to mention because we have just four commissioners unless john has joined us um, it must be a unanimous decision. We're able to pressure. Thanks, Sharon. Okay. We're willing to beg if we need to. <laughs> we really want to be able to park in our, This I never would have said this, I love having a backyard, but frankly, to be able to not have to say, hey, can you move your car so I can go to the grocery store? Or, hey, I need to go to the doctor. Can you move your car? That would be so wonderful. I mean, this is a daily inconvenience for us. And never mind if we wanted to have people over or something. I mean, it's just, yeah. It would change our lives dramatically. So we're willing to beg. <laughs> I don't want it, Kirsten. I appreciate that. I don't want I don't want this meeting to turn into a begging affair. That's <laughs> um, Grant, Grant, this Andrew is or Dana. Yeah. Uh, so this is Dana. And first I wanted to uh, really congratulate Kristen and Bob for being able to work together as neighbors to figure out that whole scenario. Um, I, I, am, I share a driveway with my neighbor and things should work so smoothly, let me tell you. Um, I, I don't have a problem with this. Uh, I, I do think that it's, it will help both properties. I clearly understand the issue here. And we know from, ex from your his history of this or the history of the house next door that it's, it is really a detriment to somebody owning, fixing up and living in that property. Um, but Jeremy, uh, you were cutting out earlier with your comment. So I, I didn't quite understand or hear all of your comment. I take it that you think the garage helps the the home benefits the one home was that it no I, I was i was saying the same as you that oh. losing the garage I, in my mind sort of the garage going away is going to make both properties more viable and, and it, losing the garage to sort of save the house um feels like the right decision to me personally and and i agree with that about you Andrew yeah no I agree I was looking through our options here um, and it seems like from what Sharon's marked out for us that the the uh, 
the code piece or rather the, the, the official piece that we can lean on the most is that it constitutes a, a, a safety hazard, um, which looking at the pictures makes sense to me. It looks like it could you know, certainly cause harm to somebody who is trying to use the building. Um, I wondered if we have, is there, um, do we have examples in the past, Sharon, of um, removing buildings from the historic district because they're inconvenient? Um, it, it, it really is very much case by case, Andrew. There's been some cases where, um, uh, you know, not, I, I'd have to say that there was one case where there was a house that had some fire damage and the owner, since she owned three houses that were nearby that were rentals, she just wanted to tear down the house that was definitely repairable to allow more parking off street in an area where there was a lot on street parking. Um, and the commission said no to that. Um, I can't think offhand of any garages as, in this tightest situation uh, that are even close to a similar situation that would, would be comparable to this. So I'd say that this is kind of a, a first for the Historic District Commission. There's been garages where the commission has asked the owner to explore repair more, but they were not shared garages. They were not shared driveways. So this is this is kind of a unique situation. And I lived with, you know, my house on Wheaton, we had a shared driveway. We had a seven and a half foot driveway. So we just barely were able to get our minivan in there. You had to fold the, uh, the mirrors in before you tried to go up the driveway. Um, so I totally understand that part of it. And a shared garage can be in a special form of um, uh, difficulty. So, uh, you know, I, I, I can't think of any other cases that would compare to this. And either way, the, the commission needs to make the decision based on um, what's the best for the historic resources. And in this, in this case, I would say that we have two historic resources that will be improved by the removal of the garage. And the third resource, the garage itself, is unfortunately may be the victim of that. Okay. That's well said, Sharon. Um, any other questions, commissioners? Any other discussion? I'm all set. Okay. Uh, hearing none, there, Sharon has provided us with a, a few options or, or suggested um, motions here. If anyone's interested in making a motion, be happy to hear it. Uh, sure, I'll take a crack at it. I'll move to approve the demolition as meeting one or more of the required criteria to issue a notice to proceed. The commission approves a notice to proceed for this project, approval of any final details to be delegated to the historic preservation coordinator. Great, thank you, Andrew. Do we have a second for that motion? I'll second. Jeremy seconds. Uh, we have a motion and we have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none and seeing no heads nodding. Sorry, oh. Grant. Uh, this is Dana. Um, sure. I, uh, so how do you do this? I would like to amend the motion to include the specific criteria of one and four. Yes. So that there's not a, we, we know that two and three are not applicable, but that's not made clear in, in the motion as read. So I would just like that do I have to make a new motion? No, we have to vote on the motion that's there. I don't know. Oh, no, you can, you can, you can, uh, you can amend the motion. So I'd like and to amend the motion. They approve the demolition as meeting the required criteria of uh, one resource constitutes a hazard to the safety of the public or to the occupants, and four retaining the resources not in the interest of the majority of the community. Right, so uh, Andrew Dana has offered a friendly amendment to your motion. Are you uh, agreeable to that? Yes. Okay, Jeremy, do you still support that motion? I do. Very good. Everything's on the up and up. Uh, Casey, can we have a roll call vote, please? Uh, roll call for vote to approve this motion? Yes, please. Sharon? Oh, uh, Grant? Oh, yes. <laughs> Jeremy? Yes. Dana? Yes. Andrew? Yes. Okay, the motion passes.
Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you just made our life so much easier. Thank you, you. you guys were very you guys were very patient. What will happen is tomorrow I will generate the official approval letter and then you will be able to go and apply for your demolition permit. Um, and I will probably email it to all three of you once I issue it first thing in the morning. Okay. Sharon, and then if you do we need the demolition permit in order to get Roger out here to, to take the doors and the windows? No, or? no. Oh. You, he can do that anytime you're ready to have him come. Okay. Hey, Sharon. Yes. You might want to make it known if you're not going to email them the actual demo permit that the stand is located outside our door if right. they don't want to get it offline. Yeah. Oh, I can, I can, shall I send you a copy of the demo app, permit application too? Yeah, that was and, great. Yeah. Okay. Then you can just fill it out and turn it back in and it takes 10 days for it to become active. And it's very important to use a demo permit because right now you're paying taxes on the garage. And unless you use a demo permit, the taxes don't go away. So, you know, it's, it's worth the minor investment to save that money. So yeah, I will send you a copy of the demo permit application at the same time. Yay! Okay, thanks. Thank you so much, all of you, for your and thank you for your patience. Thank you for listening to us. <laughs> all right, have fun knocking that down, everyone. <laughs> hey, Sharon. Before we move on. Uh, just real quick, I know that in the past, or I feel like in the past, maybe I'm wrong about this, when we have had a limited number of, such a limited number of commissioners that a unanimous approval is required, mm -hmm. have we afforded the applicants an opportunity to push to the following month? Absolutely. They're very welcome to just say, look, can we just make it next month? Okay. And that, that's always the applicant's choice. All right. Sorry, guys, I should have said it at the very beginning of the meeting, but uh, that's for Joe and Jeff. I, that would be you two. Um, either of you are welcome to push to next month if you don't feel confident in uh, a unanimous vote in your favor. And if you want to keep, if you want to keep pushing here, um, 618 Oak is next. So. Okay, um, I, uh, my name's Joe, Joe Lukeman. Um, I am the property manager on behalf of, of a friend of mine who lives in California. He's owned this property, oh, 10 years approximately, something like that. And we've had a, a third floor, uh, the, the entire third floor, it's a walk up, typical walk up uh, space up there that, that has been a finished area. It's been um, primarily used as a bedroom. It's probably the largest uh, room in, in the home other than the living area in, uh, on the first floor. So it's, you know, it's, it's been a, a desirable place for a tenant to, to make use out of a bedroom. It's fully um, drywalled, insulated, has electrical up there. Um, however, it falls short of, and uh, this was the first year that um, uh, we were even really aware that it fell short of the egress um, parameters for, you know, uh, in case of fire um, should, uh, you know, for, uh, for egress uh, from, from the window and it's on the third floor, obviously. So, so what, you know, l looking at the options, there, there weren't, a, there weren't many and, and the one uh, due to there being really only two windows up there uh, you need the light and ventilation, um, but also the egress. And so to, to make that possible, uh, we don't have a lot of room to work with, but um, with the space uh, permitted for an egress, what we'd need is a casement window on that east side. Um, and if you look at some of the photos that, that we've provided, um, the east side is gonna be you know facing, well, I'm sorry, the, uh, this is the north side, forgive me. The east side is the street side. The, the north side is the window that we're, we're discussing um, enlarging. And there's a, there, there happens to be almost just enough room to put a casement window um, on that north side. And that's gonna be in between the, the two homes there on the driveway side. So uh, definitely visible from the street, but you know not the front of the house. And uh, the idea would be to increase uh, just in uh, height and uh, height of the window, not changing the width, but to basically touch um, the 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 I guess it's it's not fascia but trim boards there uh, and and put a casement in um, with a false mullion you know to give it the look of a double hung window to meet that uh, fire safety 
uh, egress um, requirement. And, um, you know, it, it barely works, but I, I think that it does with the measurements that, that we've looked at. Um, that would work, you know, in order for a fire, fireman to, to pull someone through that window in case of an emergency, um, I think we can make that happen. And it would, I think, uh, and just, this is just my opinion, with the dimensions and, and the new trim around the, the proposed window, uh, I'm hoping to make it look kind of like the, the one that's facing the street, which is the, to say that the, the trim around the window is touching those fascia boards and trim boards uh, at the peak and also would be touching that, that roof line uh, at the bottom there. I don't know if you can see a picture. I think Sharon took some pictures as well, some close-ups of that, um, of the east front window as well. And you can kind of see how that trim, the trim around that window would touch, uh, it, it does touch the, the roof line and we it would, you know, look similar to that on, on the north side, uh, increasing that, that size and putting a casement window there for, for egress purpose. So that's the, that's the reason for the application. Um, and I just can't find another way to, to, to get that space up there, you know, legally habitable, which I, I just really hate to see that room not be used as, as it's, uh, you know, it's one of the larger rooms in the home and it, it would take it from what's been a, a really nice five bedroom, two bath home, you know, down to a four bedroom. And it's been the same tenants for about eight years. And so, you know, they also would be put out as well and, and would look for other housing. Um, so we'd like to, you know, maintain the tenants. We'd like to make it safe and legal and hopefully that window will look similar uh, to the one on the on the street side and and make that work. So that's that's why I'm here today. Well, and for the commissioners, Joe had a house that it still does, I think, at 838 Davis, yep. where we encountered the same problem almost exactly. And there needed the window um, in that case. We just wanted it to have some kind of a, a false um, meeting rail to make it kind of sort of look like a double hung window from the from the street and you know I don't know whether we really need that or not on this one but it it really made that more livable space up there um, and safer because the idea of an egress window is that there's enough room for a firefighter with gear including tanks to be able to get in and out of the window it doesn't necessarily mean that the occupant has to be able to get all the way down to the ground but the firefighter has to be able to get in and the window has to be open, has to open enough to allow the firefighter in. So a double hung window is not appropriate because uh, it's it's not a clear opening. You need a clear opening that allows the firefighter in. So. Yeah, I believe Sharon, there is a picture of that um, window at, for 838 Davis. I think I circled even that, the bar that we put across to kind of give it the, you know, the illusion of a double hung window. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's not perfect, but it does, it does uh, you can see it. Mm -hmm. All right, Joe, thanks for the summary and Sharon, thanks for the addition. I was curious about whether somebody had to be able to get to the ground, but it's, it's helpful to know the firefighter just has to be able to get in. Mm -hmm. um, commissioners, any questions, feedback, thoughts? That was going to be my question as well, so I'm all set. Jeremy? Uh, Joe, can you talk about what the so part, part of what I feel like is missing from the application is just, you know, what the new details are gonna be like, what the, the trim is gonna be like, um, what, it's, what the trim is gonna be made out of, what the window is gonna be made out of. I, I don't know. Maybe yeah, sure. I, I did include um, a workup from Lowe's and this is, this is the typical uh, casement window that we will order. It is a wood uh, window. Um, that uh, will swing swing outward. Um, the look the look of it, um, you know, with the bar across again would kind of look like the one not quite as big as the as the example that I included that says 838 Davis. Um, but it would uh, it would be a, you know the materials would be appropriate, and I would probably have Sharon approve that before I I spent 600 bucks on a window. I would have her make sure that it was appropriate. Um, the trim is probably the most important thing, and that's why I'm really not working with a whole lot of, of room here. But the the um, the width of the trim would probably be kept the same, particularly the the sides, because we're not really going to widen it. Um, but I'm going to try to keep what I tried to do when I measured was to keep the the, the measurements of this trim uh, in mind when when we raised it up. So really, what we're doing is we're adding. Oh, approximately 12 inches. Um, so really six inches up and six inches uh, down, which is going to give me just enough room to keep the, the, the look of the window as it is now. And I, and I had that in mind when, when I was even doing the measuring because um, 
you know, I know that's what that's what's going to be desired is to have the look and feel of the original window. And I, I think we can do that here. Um, if you if you look at the, the photo, um, you know, we will have to go into the, that fish scale a little bit. Some of that that third or fourth row may, may have to come out, you know, but we'll cut into that, make sure that, you know, and everything that is there around it, it stays the same. It's really we're just going up and we're coming down with it. We lose the fish scale below the window that that. Uh, the sill itself would be sitting right at the top of that roof line is the way I envision it. And um, that's about it. I don't really have <laughs> any other way, way to go, but, but the, as far as the, you know, how it would look um, aesthetically, I, I believe it would look the, the widths of the trim, the paint color, that would be it. Obviously it'd be wood. There is a storm on there currently. I, I don't think there would be a storm on there uh, that would defeat the purpose of course of the, of the egress, but um, with that bar that we, we could put across it would give it the look of the double hung window so yeah and the the anything. window on the front of the house on the east side is mm -hmm. right up to the edge of the to the roof and right up to the corners of the uh the raking cornice so really it's going to be the freeze board it's it's it'll be a bigger window on the north side but it like you said it will have actually more of a look of the, the window that's at the front it'll kind of match it yes Agreed, and and really, uh, it's it's just enough room to make this work, and and uh, I, I think I think it's doable. It's the only solution I, I can I can think of to make this you know a safe and habitable space up there. And uh, there just isn't another. There's not a rear window. There, these are the only two peaks with with windows, so I'm kind of limited to my choice. And there just isn't any room, as you can see on the front of the house, uh, the street side anyway, to to really to make that to, to increase the size there would only make it make it look silly and, and not appropriate so um yeah i think i just want to make sure that the trim that's going back is going to be wood and not yeah it, I, we're, we're, we're looking to make it you know especially with that little piece of trim at the top there that overhangs and mm -hmm. as well as the sill a proper sill there that and you know paint to match again minus the storm window on there it should look very similar to the one on the on the street side of the, of the house and I believe I'll need a building permit, Sharon, right? For Yeah, for... because you're making the size bigger. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I did, I, I looked up the uh, the product online because I was curious about that as well. And it looks like these are all um, wood uh, framed windows, right? So that would be more appropriate than some of the things that we've seen that have come through. And again, I will, uh, I will make sure Sharon uh, gives me the thumbs up on that um, mm -hmm. before I move forward. Jeremy, does that satisfy your question? Yeah, yeah. I think we just want to make sure we get that in the motion. Um, yeah, I think we typically capture that stuff in the uh, details to be delegated to the preservation coordinator portion, right, Sharon? Yep. Okay. Uh, Dana, did you have any questions? I do not. Okay. Uh, I don't have any either, so... Uh, commissioners, if anyone is interested in willing in making a motion, please carry on. Sharon's provided us some, some options here as well. I, I will make a motion to approve the replacement window as specified uh, with uh, new trim to match the profile and make of the uh, existing trim. Um, the commission approves a certificate of appropriateness for this project and the approval of any final details to be delegated to the historic preservation coordinator. Second. Sorry, I didn't catch who did the second. That was Andrew. Andrew, okay, thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion, commissioners? Not for me. We're hearing and seeing none. Um, can we have a roll call vote, please? Either Sharon or Casey, whoever's doing that. Grant? Yes. Jeremy? Yes. Dana? Yes. Andrew? Yes. Wonderful. I appreciate it. I will, um, Sharon, I will follow up with you then on some materials and things that, uh, on that end and uh, pull a building permit and um, try to get this scheduled. Sounds good. Wonderful. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. All right, uh, moving on, Sharon, to uh, what, 220 Stewart, is that correct? Yep. Okay. And 
proposed work is the installation of a deck and a staircase, eh? Yes. Yeah. We still have Jeff. And we Jeff, do. you're here to speak to that, right? Yes, sir. Cool. Uh, take it away, man. It's all yours. Okay. Uh, my wife, Carl, and I moved into 220 Stewart in September of last year. We would like to apply to build a deck on the back of the house. We interviewed, I think, six or eight builders um, locally here to come up with a plan that was not only tasteful, but that would adhere to the Kalamazoo building codes and also the preferences of the historical society in terms of the type of railings to be used, head off the ground, um, things like that. The one we chose seemed very familiar with the requirements of not only Kalamazoo, but things that have been done in the area in the past. So he was kind enough to draw us up plans that we think fit our needs very well. Right now, if you look at back uh, pictures of the back of the house, there is a kind of awkward deck on the back up by a doorway in the second story. Um, that comes out of a bedroom. And the reason that we want to make it a dual level deck is, is first of all, we think it'd be just better physically for the use of the deck, but also to have a second exit outside of the top of the house because our living quarters are all upstairs. Um, everyone is upstairs. If something were to happen, there's really only one staircase inside the house that would be able to exit. Up. So this would be a little bit of a safety thing too, but we also wanted to make sure that the deck wasn't something that was too large, gaudy, didn't fit with the neighborhood or our fencing in the back. We wanted it to be something that would expand our use of the house at the backyard, but still kind of remain not visible from the street, not something that's not going to went so far as to make plans to flatten the grade of the backyard to the extent of the deck so that we can not only adhere to the high requirements of the deck, but also to just kind of make it more linear and fit with that backyard aesthetic. So um, yeah, my wife and I would like to do that. We have somebody waiting in the wings to do that. He's experienced and I think he do a great job for us. All right, thanks for the summary, Jeff. Uh, Sharon, anything you'd like to add? The only, I mean, I, I, think, I think this is really interesting. It's a wonderful way to use that space back there. Um, but I was wondering the the rail that is pictured in your drawings is the classic suburban deck rail with the uh, spindles screwed to the outside of the horizontal pieces. And I was wondering whether that could be reversed so that it would kind of look more like a front porch rail and just have those spindles screwed to the inside instead. I'm, I'm sure it can. And actually the, the, the guidelines that you provided me mm -hmm. for those types of things is something our builder has. Oh, um, nice. I think that um, when we were talking to him, what you're physically seeing on the plans here are kind of the result of a software program he has. Oh, so, you know, if we give him specifics toward that, he was very clear that he can do that easily. Nice. You know, in the same way that, you know, you can't see how the edges of the boards are and things like that here. He's got uh -huh. all the requirements from you and seem very familiar with them. Okay. Sure. Okay. That was, that was my only comment. You know, okay. um, decks are by their very nature removable. Yep. Um, even the rail that you're putting on the upper, you know, mini deck that's up there. You know, it's 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 all removable. It's not a permanent alteration of the house. It's yeah. uh, almost more like an accessory, an accessory building than necessarily a permanent change of the historic house. So yes, yeah, and yeah. we did check too. And there's there's not any old infrastructure in the backyard. Um, there was electric run to the garage at some point, but um, really, there's nothing back there. I think that we're going to mess with by taking those tank holes either. So it should be a fairly easy. What is the plan with the existing metal railing on top of the house? The I think the metal railing is going to be replaced by railing that will match the rest of the deck and the landing. So if you look at the plans, um, that metal railing on the top, I don't think fits really well anyway. Um, no, I, I don't think it's original to the house. I mean, there no, was probably no, some kind of rail there. But it wasn't yeah, that. I can, yeah, I can guarantee that because if, if you looked close at where it's connected to the roof and the house, it was not. 
So we made the decision to replace that with something that's going to be cohesive to that. So that will match throughout the back list. Any other questions, commissioners? Um, I might just be missing it, um, but I'm trying to see as I'm looking through the plans how the deck and the new stairs going up lines up with the existing door on the first floor and those concrete steps that come down. How is that? Um, can you walk me through how that is going yeah, to the, look? The, the stairs and the landing will actually come out far enough that that door will be underneath the landing. Okay. Okay. So our plan was that there's going to be a little more of an overhang than is on the current deck upstairs. So it was coming out for exactly that reason to give room for that doorway so we can still exit through that door and still have those steps available down to the deck. I see. Okay. So the so the deck isn't just the the first floor deck isn't actually up against the house. It's it's set away from the house a, a, a little bit. A little bit, yes. It's not going to be connected down there. Okay. It'll be close, but. Are you talking about the second I'm, floor or the first? I was talking about the uh, the first floor. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. I understand, I think. Yeah, if it's uh, easier to visualize, that top part of the deck is going to come out from the house a little further than it currently yeah. is, which is not. You would still come out the lower level back door and go down those steps. Under yes, the absolutely. Yep. Because that connects right to our that side porch. It's going to give you a little bit of a roof over that back door, too. Yeah, I think that'll be a benefit as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Dana, any questions from you? No, just a comment. Um, I live across the street and you can't see anything in the backyard. So there's no visual disturbance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, commissioners, any other questions or feedback before we, uh, before I ask for a motion? Nope, I'm all set. Um, I guess. I guess I just wanted to point out, I think Sharon, you had said, you know, it's a deck, it's easily removable. I mean, sort of the way it's drawn, it's 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 gonna be sort of tied into the roof on top of that the little one story right there. So it's you know, I guess Jeff, just for you, I think that's you know, just make sure your deck builder has got that figured out. That looks like it's gonna be pretty tricky there to come in, line up. And miss that window to sit right in the door. So, just okay. Whatever it yeah. is. You know, so, sometimes these things are hard because, you know, the drawings for the deck are great, but they don't really show how it fits on the house. And, and we see that sort of thing all the time. So, okay. Yeah, I'll definitely have him be aware. And he's, um, he but, seems really knowledgeable about the old homes and kind of how to, how to do this in a non obtrusive way in terms sure. of connecting to the house or being close to the house in a particular way. So absolutely, the, I'll mention it. What is the railing, is, what is the deck made out of? Is it um, it's going to be treated lumber. We're going to let it age probably until the fall and then we will likely stain it in a, the house itself is gray stucco with black trim. So we kind of want to wait till it cures a little bit and then probably in the fall we'll stain it a complementary color to the rest of the house. Probably some variation of gray, feel it. Yeah. And I also agree, Sharon. I think it'd be nice to put the spindles on the other side of the rail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sharon, can you detail that in some Absolutely. way? Absolutely. Give it to my builder. Yep. No problem. Okay. All right, gang. Anything anything else? Nope. Anyone interested in making a motion? I'm happy to do it. I move that the commission approve the new deck at the rear of the house as proposed. The plan substantially complies with Secretary of the Interior Standards number nine and number 10. The commission approves a certificate of appropriateness for this project 
approval of any final details to be delegated to the Historic Preservation Coordinator. I second that. We have a motion from Andrew and a second from Dana. Thank you both. Any additional comments, commissioners? No. Hearing none, Sharon, can we have a roll call vote, please? Grant. Yes. Jeremy. Yes. Andrew. Yes. Dana. Yes. Passes unanimous. Yay. So we'll let Dana know the grand opening and you're all invited. <laughs> enjoy enjoy the deck. I'm very jealous. Thank it sounds you. nice. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. Good night, folks. Good night. All right, team. We are uh, through the new business. We're on to the minutes from February, which should have been included in your packet. They look pretty good to me. Yes. Yes, agreed. Okay. Um, I just need a motion to approve those and support for it. Wait, wait, hold on. I think I just saw something weird. I did on page three of three. Um, I, I think it says Mr. Berg volunteered to resign early to make the decision easier. easier no, that should be Mr. Shell. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're not letting you off that easy, Jeremy. <laughs> that was yeah, weird. I see it. Yep. And, and uh, um, BJ has resigned. He sent me an email officially resigning, so. Okay, any other changes? Anyone care to make a motion? Uh, I'll move to approve the minutes as amended. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Berg, a second from Mr. Grayson. Any objections? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. And a bunch of administrative approvals. Thank you, Sharon. Anything you want to point out there? No. Nah. It was it was almost as busy this year during the shutdown as it has been in the past. I was pleasantly surprised. I had expected it to be a substantially lower number and it was down by maybe 5%. That's great. So, yeah. Cool. So we are on then to uh, other business, which includes the election of officers um, and the approval of, or hopeful approval of the two applications for new members, Eric Stuckey and Carla Reganis. Yes, you got okay. it. Cool. Um, the officers, if I understand correctly, Sharon, it needs to be from the existing contingent. So this would be the, the four, well, four minus me plus Dan and John, is that correct? Right, right. Yeah, and can we really can we really do this with just the the three plus one of us here? Officially, yes. Um, I think it would be perhaps inappropriate to elect someone who's not here. <laughs> <laughs> That's how business works, Sharon. Are you kidding me? I know. I know. I was telling Grant about the time I was elected to a board and I at the beginning of the first meeting I left to go to the bathroom for a minute and came back to find out I was chair. So <laughs> we could also we could also push this to next month, guys. Guys and gals. I, I, would, I would move to postpone the election we, to the next meeting. And, and we may have um, our new commissioners appointed by then, too, which would allow them to participate. OK, so Sharon, we don't do we need a motion to move that to next month or can we just push no, it? Okay. I can just I can just move it. All right. So then that brings us to uh, the new commissioners. So there are Sharon, are there two open seats? Yes. You and uh, BJ. Two open seats, two applications. 
they both seem pretty cool to me. Yes. I don't know Carla as well as I know Stucky. He goes by his last name, but um, he's currently the crew chief for uh, the KPEP program teaching um, returning offenders uh, or returning citizens um, uh, construction skills. So he, he understands buildings. He owns, if you've seen that green um, Italianate house on the right, right around the, on the corner of Cedar and almost on the corner of Cedar and Park Street with the solar panels on the west side, that's his house. So he's not in the historic district, but he gets old houses. Very cool. So Sherry, do you need separate motions for each of them or can you just approve both of them in one motion? It could, it could be both in one motion. So would anyone like to make a motion to approve the appointment of Eric Todd Stuckey and Carla Reganis to the Kalamazoo Historic District Commission? Yes, I'll make a motion to approve Carla Reganis and Mr. Eric Todd Stuckey to the uh, Kalamazoo Historic District Commission. Awesome, thanks for that. Is there support for that motion? I'll second it. Motion and support. Uh, Sharon, do you need a roll call vote for this one? No, this can be just a voice vote. Okay, we have a motion and support. Is there any objection to the motion? Hearing none, seeing none, they are approved. And cool. I think that's it. Yeah, and then just what you included about the, uh, the fires on North and Woodward. Yes, yep. Just that was clearly arson. It's being it's being investigated. Um, I I was I was just I was heartbroken when I saw that that center house was gone, and that the other two had been taken with it just because of the intensity of the fire. Um, it was clearly a, a not a natural cause because the building, both buildings, the center one and the one on the corner to the right were both completely no electricity, no gas, nothing was going on in the building. So there was no combustion that could have started all by itself. And we don't have the report yet, so. And, and that is in the historic district, is it not? Yes, sure? it is. Yep, so yes it is. And so anything that goes up in place of it will be under the purview of the commission. So we'll have the chance to exercise our new construction approval skills. And the the one at nine hundred two North is the, mm -hmm. it, are they talking about trying to repair and restore that one or is that oh one no they're all out? three gone all three are gone okay yep I think that the 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 fire was the night of the disturbances in downtown Kalamazoo and oh yeah we could we could smell it from our house it was yeah pretty and, scary. and and I think they were concerned with the doing the demolitions that quickly that if they left them up, someone might come the next night and finish the job and putting yeah. possibly even more houses and people's lives at risk. So um, I think that's one of the reasons. And, and from what I have heard um, secondhand from the fire marshal, the interior of both the houses, well, this obviously the one where that's all that's left is the chimney. Um, you know, that one that was completely gone already but the other two were so damaged in the center of the interior that they were no longer, they probably weren't even candidates for being repaired. Okay. So it was, they were badly damaged, so. Um, I was also curious if we know anything about the fire that happened at the corner of Elm and Cal Ave, that uh, brick. That was a, um, uh, someone who fell asleep with a cigarette lit. Is, and is that going to require some uh, repair? Anything that might come in front of us? Not, not, and not in, not on the outside. Uh, I believe that there might have been some damage to the side door, but it was not an original historic door. Okay. So that would probably be an administrative approval to replace it. But um, sadly, that that one did have a fatality. But it was the person who was the smoker. So nobody else was lost in that one, which is good. And we lost one, two, two other, two other buildings. Um, also, one on Stockbridge, which is a complete loss of building, and another one over on Cal on uh, Patterson across from the Douglas Community Center. And then just Saturday night, we lost one on Crom. All of these were vacant buildings. 
So thank goodness. Other than the one that, and the lady that lived in the one house that was occupied on this block of, of North Street um, did get out and she is fine. And she had a GoFundMe that raised $38,000 and she was able to move back to where the rest of her family lives in Van Buren County. And they were able to fix up a little house on the property for her to live in. So now she's back close to her family and they're all very happy about it. So uh, uh, we lost the buildings, but there was no loss of life. Sharon, just to follow up on uh, Rorick Brothers. So I mm -hmm. learned that that demolition is going to happen this month. And they are fully funded to do what they want to do to get for their approved plans. Wow. Excellent. MEDC through, came through for them, so we're all good. We're all good. Surprising. I was when, when I got the uh, I they they queried me the building department about the demolition permit and I thought okay is this just demo or are they going to go ahead with the plans but then I found out that everything has been approved so it's it's going to go as planned. All right. Uh. There's nothing further. I'd be to entertain a motion to adjourn. Is there support for that motion? I'll second that motion. A motion to adjourn and support. Any objection? Hearing none, it's been an absolute pleasure serving with all of you. I think I'm Good out. Good to see right you here. again. You can come back after a year. You know where to find me. Thank you for your <laughs> leadership. Yes. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Grant. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Sharon, am I good to go? Yes, ma'am. All right. See you next time you're in the office. Yes, ma'am. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All done, sign out.